Welcome back, everyone, to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover. But we got to talk about the IC500 electronic calculator. Computers are, as the name implies, designed to handle complex computational problems. The widespread adoption in government business and has made the complex bulk calculations necessary to function of a modern economy much easier. But the kind small calculations that accountants and stockbrokers make dozens of times every day, calculations still have to be done by hand. That changes today. We launched Sony's new ICC 500 electronic calculator. While still somewhat bulky of 6.3 kilograms, it can fit on an average office desk and handle calculations up to 14 digits nearly instantaneously. This will be necessary too for anyone working in finance or anyone or in the, any other arena that requires regular calculations. The abacus is finally obsolete, so we did get to 100% average of uh, product uh, interest and quality. So, fantastic. 953. Upland Drive, Lamb drove upriver through the new road that led out of Koshin into the eastward coast where the old village near Shenzhen lay. He hadn't been out of this way for a decade and the road looked busier, bustling with pickup trucks, engines hauling containers. Lamb remembered those patchwork dirt roads where now the highway rolled on and on, a vein of commerce flowing inwards and outwards from Guangdong's tricameral heart. The temperate weather seemed to soften the ver verdure of the tall grasses leading off into the deep woods and marshes where the father once told him to get that outlaws and heroes once hid. He put more pressure on the gas. Shenzhen was not that far away. When he arrived, everyone gawked at him in his blue uniform. His mother wrinkles emerging from her face now smiled with genteel, uh, slight pride. Her, he embraced his mother, cousins, and uncle, and they invited him back to his house. Well, they sat around in a circle around a plate of mantu and condensed milk. Tea was served as well as his cousins' feet thumping hurriedly on the wooden floors to get the cups for their elders. Homecoming. I made a name for myself, huh? The lamb said, Uncle, a bit after the ceremony. Did think I'd ever get here? Well, Uncle said, sloshing his tea around in a cup. No one expected you to work in this kind of thing. An acerbic note entered his voice. Strange. Your father was a revolutionary, you instead are a policeman. I don't justify yourself to me, Uncle said to see. A man needs to do what he has to do for a living. We don't have much here, not anymore. Republican trade has been on the decline for years now. My children had to take to the sea to earn a living, he coughed. It's tough for out, rough out here. I can always send for more patriots if that's what you need. Ah, uh, Sion, Uncle met his eyes, there's more than the money. On the the night skies bristle with fireworks, much more. How much more, Lem wonder, how much more? I was doing tax relief for the lower income, of course. Which I think we read last time, too, so if you're going to do this one again, please go ahead. We're going to be fighting for every seat we possibly can. Um, tax rationalization ordinance? I read this last time probably too, but... Any permanent changes to Guangdong's tax laws and any hope of actually getting a broad swath of Guangdong society to agree to pay? Rest on our ability to pass a proposed raft of tax legislation through a legislative council. Nobody expects the vote to be easy, nobody likes paying the tax men, and the core of enemies even less so, but we must not stop here. Market turbulence, oh boy. Murray Takeo was conducting a telephone meeting with one of the ranking executives of the newly formed Sony of America. Discuss the nature of the American market, what consumers responded to positively, and what they did not care for, and to better tailor Sony's marketing efforts to break into the American market. Our current efforts are centered around the West Coast, as we continue to expand our operations and look to provide services and products to other regions. We must be ready to take into account differences in regional culture and necessities, Executive explained Marito. It's all been very encouraging news, Marito began, but every new venture has its fair shares of obstacles. What difficulties have you experienced thus far? Well, the executive said, his voice showing the slight bit of discomfort, there are many consumers on the side of the ocean that are not happy to see any Japanese-linked businesses setting up shop in the neighborhood. The National Second the Front National Progressive Party, a bad pact, has been inciting dangerous stunts in the cities with Sony of America locations. They demand that we expel them from the country or leave voluntarily. I see, Marita said. Say the current course and monitor the protests closely. Our sales matter, but we can't ignore the safety of company assets or employees, especially when replacing anything in America is so difficult. Hopefully things will settle down. I recall, 1952. Even as the days came and went, nothing ever seemed to change in Hong Kong. The heat of the midday sun, the stench of the discarded refuse, the little indignities, eating extra costs here, being skimmed on the margin here, even at Li Ka-shing's lunch, a modest box of limp vegetables, hard meat and rice, seemed to grow smaller without fail. Li fought off the urge to wipe the sweat from his balding head. He survived on his own for years, even during the worst of the Japanese occupation, but now, factory after factory was going out of business, with the greedy ones being bought out and the stubborn ones being squeezed out. Li sighed, resting, uh, wrestling with a nestle, a nestle at some... Uh, frustration. It was not quite hatred, not anymore, after being beaten into submission, but it burned all the same, consuming the oxygen left as the future disappeared. Eventually it burned out, and Lee would have nothing. It would pay for anything decent for a plastic uh, flower factory. Lee kicked his right foot forward, and was surprised when it made contact. A soft mumble, not even an apology, announced the presence of the man by Lee's feet, ha lying half conscious against his factory's door. A wave of irritation crest inside Lee. Watch it, poke eye. Go find somewhere else to. The tinny sound interrupted him, unmistakably unnatural despite his faintness. It was an unfamiliar tune of Japanese emanating from a bundle of metal and wire clasped tightly in the man's hand. Even as the man himself seemed ready to go, let go of life, it was a radio smaller than anything Lee had seen before. Intrigued, Lee put the Japanese man and his radio inside. Some relief at last? Lee Chun, coming home from his job, found his parents, Leong and Mai, poring over the family budget. They looked up at it and smiled in greeting before they get back to work. 
However, Joe had something important to say. Did you hear mom and dad? They're cutting taxes on income for most of us, except for the wealthy fat cats up down town. We'll also, we'll have more money to put to use for ourselves, and even better save for wine and hay. Leong nodded. I heard. That's a darn good development. But May sighed, and her husband and son looked at her in some concern. She elaborated on a point. We have more money, that's well and good, but we still need to make sure we have all something to eat. And of course, there's a matter of getting more clothes for us to wear, also. I heard some, something that you might not have heard about yet. What's that? Well, the companies are planning to raise prices to adjust for reduced taxes, which means the government's probably going to still get its cut. At this, Long and Chong's enthusiasm was dampened, but the hope didn't entirely die out after all. That would really still mattered. And then, even if they weren't able to get as much as they wanted, the Lee family would probably still have room for nice things here and there once in a while. Their wallets would certainly be heavy regardless. So, right now we're 46. That's not bad. You get bribed for four seats, maybe. 30 days. We'll see. So, let's increase. Income and business tax by 2.5%. Let's take a look and see. Because we don't really talk about this, but income taxes gives us a lot. The business taxes, not so much. But income, that's quite a bit. And but due to low income tax relief... Oh, income taxes will not... Okay so, okay, so we don't get any more money from income taxes. Okay, interesting. So no more money from income taxes. And then you get a sales tax of 2.5% but you introduce the state of Guangdong. So let's see if we can bribe some people to make sure that we do well here. Oh, that's not good. Only 0.53? Well, that's kind of sad. Forced labor doesn't help us. Hey, what about advancements in household electronics? Please go ahead, but that's uh, pretty normal for us. We're a pretty advanced group here. Stain's finally gone. And fiscal independence. The work may be thankless and tiring, but it's done. Guangdong's revenue system has been entirely revamped and rebuilt from the ground up to provide a tax base and can support a vision of the state. Not as a simple caretaker for corporate large guests, but as a provider of much union to public services within the framework of Guangdong's capitalist economy. Nobody likes paying more to the authorities, of course. We can all hope that the chief executive Marita's plans for the economy and social issues can convince the populace that it's all worth it. Kickbacks for backwards. Oh, look at this. Marita rubbed his temple, considering the problem before him. It was an unfortunate reality at not all, or even most, of the Legislative Council members aligned with Sony and Chung Kong shared his, and his vision for a better Guangdong. They're just opportunists, like the rest, and aligned with the Marita's faction because they know how to align with someone. They meant the support for each other, or oh, for each other, for each particular form and proposed couldn't be guaranteed, particularly if it felt like it didn't obviously advance their interests, as was unfortunately the case with the current proposal, so Marita was left with a choice. He could build some kickbacks to the firms aligned with his faction into the legislation, thereby giving us more opportunistic backers to clear self interest reason to vote for it, but that means sinking to the level of naked corruption. That was no normal going down, of course, but supposed to be fixing it, not participating himself on, in it. On the other hand, it may be the only way to pass his agenda and actually succeed a reforming system. You gotta play with the cards you dealt. See? 56, totally fine. No issues. Nice. Hey, only a billion, that's not bad. Next one, academic base research facilities, yes please. Must choose backing. A muscle shooter leaned back in his chair, I certainly could get you the votes you need, I just need some help from you in exchange. You know, on the other side of the desk, Marina narrowed his eyes, what sort of help? Muscle shooter smiled, well, the new product cycle is approaching, and it would be very helpful if Muscle shooter act electric. Get a first priority for patent approval and safety inspections. I'm not asking for anything untoward, just for the bureaucracy to run efficiency is why is a small item for us. When you consider, it was true that there was nothing illegal about the proposal, but it would certainly give Monster Street an unfair advantage and an, an anti-competitive advantage. They get its products for this year on the market for everyone else. You've got no deal. National Building Community? Communities appear anywhere, anytime. Even among Sony scientists, workers tired of heavy labor at Thatcher's factory all make up a community. Some sociologists have made interesting suggestions. Create an institution that can help officially help uh, local communities, and they can help themselves through experimental community programs such as health improvement and adult education. Not just through expensive bureaucracy and ordinance, so let's try that. Simple beyond an experience, a sense of solidarity can bind this new society. Any businessman knew that one had to spend money to make money, but not when their money was taken away for someone else's game. None of the programs we've laid out uh, in our policy address fund uh, will fund themselves, okay, I'll uh, say it plaintively. If we can't raise for this public person, we'll have to ask the investors, and they'll give us an even harder time than the Lugco. I think he book and Komaz man will give them a run for their money, or through his Warren notebook under the desk with a thud. The page is filled to the brim with the names and phone numbers of all the 100 Lugco members. They're never going to give us a time of day. Why do we even bother? Because I'd rather try to convince one out of a hundred people than ten out of a thousand. Lee hammered this point home to him, underlining several names on a chaos discarded notebook. The marginal gain from even one person changing their mind is too big to pass up. We were cheering on the end of his pencil, trying to remember anything relevant about the names Lee underlined. All Fujitsu and Hitachi men, yes, they were all colleagues in the loco, but since when that collegiality mattered between business and competitors? Try. Right. Here's this one. That's okay to do. Look how close we are. 26.47%, 25.41%. Not bad, it's very close. 
1.01. Inflation is still pretty high. But what else is new? Passage of the National Task Rationalization Ordinance, the new ordinance being considered in the Lake Co. of Guangdong was not debated. No, it was vigorously argued over, to the point where people were generally concerned that actual fights would break out. The violent, almost barbaric argument began an angry forte of near primal rage and reached a terrible concern by the time the votes were counted. The measure having reached a majority, I announced that it has been passed. With those words, the chamber erupted with the sound of anger, despair, and confusion. Many of the delegates knew very well that they were truly to be impacted by the tax measures passed by Marita, Akeo, and Likashin. They tried and failed to prevent them from going through, but now they were on outrage. Now, at least among them was Ibuka Masu, who let loose with his wrath at Lee and Marita. You guys, don't you know what you're doing to the engine of invention that are, is our company's? You're good for nothing, bleeding heart imbeciles. Next to him, the silently fuming Ikuma was consumed with an on Oni's rage. It moved Hitachi here to build a Manchurian industrial paradise with less taxes than a Manchukuo, yet here the state faction managed to make it so he'd have to pay more in taxes and be prevented from reaching his dream of true, true efficiency. His ground is gears, the ground is gears beyond belief. Marita Okeo uh, looked at all this, nodded into his end of satisfaction, and left. Oh, because of kickbacks and business taxes will actually decrease. So it only goes up by 2%. You know, it's alright. Let's go independence. Ooh, inflation will decrease. Oh, we could do that, but I can save that for when we have to, have to pass everything else. Which we're almost done passing stuff here, so. Um, I read this one last time. So if you want to do this one, please go ahead. How many... Oh, yeah, there you go. That's nice. Increase inflation, that'd be nice, actually. But we have a cup of ginseng guava tea here. A guava with ginseng tea. Something like that. Ah, fantastic. Um, I've heard this one before, so you want to... Actually, let's see. If you want to do the console general's games, please go ahead. Um, okay. And there's, uh, let's see... Chief Executive, I've been waiting to see you. There's another snag that comes up. Sometimes I think we all talk about our snags, Murray Takeo murmured as he took, took his familiar seat in Takashima's office, breathing in the smoke and blinking in the haze he'd grown accustomed to. Well, yes, Tokyo's gotten themselves all twisted into knots and some about your corporate compatriots. There's no room for Japanese firms to compete in the Guangdong market now that the five corporations have gotten so entrenched. I can't stop corporations from making money, Consul General. I don't know what you, why you expect me to. Of course I understand that. Takashima rubbed his brow, snuffing out a cigarette. But they're complaining all the same. They want you to pay the corporations to make some space for them. Murdy Chaos stared incredulously across the table. You can't be serious. You want me to pay my peers a lot of competitors into the market? How about you tell a Japanese firm that they've got the whole rest of Asia to sell to? Chief Executive, surely you of all people understand how profit driven these corporations get. The Consul General sighed, adjusting his glasses, as you recall, but even if you don't give them this, I wouldn't count on the investments coming back anytime soon. Fine, fine. Uh, I'll do it, darn it. Okay, so be it. Hey, that's looking better already. The growth is not as much, but that's okay. And. Sure, why not? Still 50 seats. Expand public community facilities to provide better public services. Cooperative alternative plans. Okay, have you seen this? Uh, he asked. Uh, Okay, have you seen this? Murita shook his head and snatched a report from Li Kishin's hand. It's how I read. Proposal of Chief Executive Murita Keo. Murita's eyes sparkled with interest. Strengthen the ties of local organizations and educational and medical facilities. Sounds like a good idea. How do you think we can do that? He asked Lee. Lee hung his head. I don't think I think it's a good program, but it's experimental and tested, and we could do it on a smaller scale, or we could deny it to avoid overloading our educational and medical facilities. What do you think, Keo? Let's increase organization collaboration. Strengthen connections between local organizations and healthcare and education facilities. But what about additional cost of public services? Well, let's take a look see. We're maxed out, that's a wonder. We lose a seat here. We still have 30 days. More green space with plans for a national park in Guangdong. The government is once again at a crossroads. Expanding the national park would curb unnecessary development, preserving Guangdong's greenery nature. It provides a security for local communities. However, expanding the national park would literally expand the area that cannot be developed, and businesses that feel the potential gains could be compromised will likely oppose it. Whether expand and keep the current ordinance, the choice will eventually have to be made. Expand national park to strengthen conservation efforts. We need three more votes, which is kind of going to be kind of costly, actually. I wonder if we can pass it still. We got one, two, three we can do, but still. It's November. Let's take a look-see and wait for it. What's this one? Clean start, huh? Ah. How this one? A oh, Lion Rock Spirit, huh? Casual conversation. Huh. The tick of the clock on the wall is only sound to cut through the silence in Constant General Song's office. Was soon joined by the sound of the tap of the Murray Chaos fingers on the desk. 
As I stirred and checked the time, five minutes left. Five minutes of silence would be a decidedly awkward way to end an otherwise productive meeting, he decided. And so his mind spun through a few topics of light discussion before landing on the one he liked. If you would indulge in my curiosity, Consul General, you've clearly had some experience with diplomatic matters before this. Surely you've been posted in a number of intriguing places. Which would you say is most memorable? Most memorable, that's a difficult question. Song's eyes turned to the ceiling and thought, his mouth drawing into a line. Finally, his focus shifted back to his counterpart. I was a son of the old United Russian Front back in the 50s. Just before the invasion of the Germans, most of my colleagues pitied me. The best were sent to Washington or Tokyo or Germania. Even the unlucky ones went to Bangkok or Jakarta. A wistful smile spread across his face, seemingly without realizing I was completely out of my depth. A country I had not lived in was colder than anything I would known, and speaking a language which I had a poor grasp of and about to fight a devastating war, but I certainly didn't build any connections like my colleagues did. But Murray took out tilted his head. I couldn't have asked for a more intense learning experience, and in some way being in those wastes with the soldiers and the cold and shortages felt almost comfortable. I've yet to feel that same way in any of my other posts. The clock twisted past a time, uh, or in time, but the chief executive didn't move, his brow so furrowed. Song simply smiled and took his jacket from its hanger and made his exit. A modest man in a nation of excess. In a billion, that's good. So we still gotta do the Lion Rock Spirit. I think I read this one before, but you know, life in Guangdong is not easy despite our best efforts. An atmosphere of profits prioritized above all else, there's only so much we can ask from the collective effort at the highest levels where competition is a way of life, but we've taken the first step to show this to the people that the government can and will provide an opportunity for a better life. Whether we offer solidarity to the people of this erstwhile nation, we can now call on the people to persevere to direct their energies from simple survival to prosperity. Guangdong Public Plan. Despite the vast population of the Pearl River, Delta, infrastructure expansion such as power distribution and water supply is slow with some unfortunate areas with low supply priorities constantly experiencing power outages and water shortages. We'll maintain central power distribution and water facilities while building power plants that will provide sufficient reserve power to the city and reservoirs that will provide uninterrupted clean water. We should probably do this one after this one, maybe. I like to purge them, but we have 15 days left. Oh, and what do we do? National Community Building? Oh wow, so basically agriculture will get better, healthcare will get better, poverty will get better, uh, increase organization and collaboration will increase more spending, but academic and healthcare will get better. Because of expanded national parks, you get more Sony seat, which is good, and because of community facility, poverty will get even better too. It doesn't look like we'll get any extra help here, so we got we need three seats. Which is just gonna suck for us. Um So we need three seats here, bribe our own, two, three. There you go. We're back up to 11%, which sucks. But we can still do this one too. And boom, there we go. We're good. Fantastic. Beyond the limits, Guangdong's transportation system is a mess due uh, to the untidy public transportation overstretched urban centers. Workers are either going to work early in the morning or risking their lives. However, with the achievement of our recent reform ordinance, we can finally cure incurable diseases in the Pearl River Delta. Nice. Not yet lost, huh? My name is Krzysztof Janowski. I entered the University of Warsaw at the age of 17, full of hope and promise for the future, but then war broke out and everything changed. As a refuge, I found myself being chased by the Nazis, and I found myself exiled by the Stalinists in Tiumen. I found oligarchs in Novosibirsk trying to kill me. I found the NKVD in Irkutsk trying to put me in a gulag after all these decades. I knew I had to find a new place to call home, so I set out on a journey to the far south. But when I arrived, I found myself in a strange and unfamiliar place. I wasn't the only one away from faraway Poland, and no one else considered this place a true home, a homeland. Uh, but nothing said to me more than the rush of Guangdong. The more I got to know the soulless land, the more I realized that only here did I find a determined drive and desire to push past limits and traditions to achieve the impossible. Guangdong itself is an impossible creation, but I found the irony of endless dedication and aspiration of the place. I found myself working as a technician in a Sony factory and became a quite a respected figure in the community as I moved into the middle class. Can you imagine being abandoned, running away, and having nothing left to live for, only to discover new life, if you can? I think I can call Koshi my new home, even though it's not a familiar place like Warsaw. Land the souls is in a soulless land. So, how many days we got here? Well, we can wait. Well, we can do one of these. Let's decrease inflation. Yeah, let's go and decrease inflation. That's fine. Fiscal independence is good. So, that mine. Which one do we want to do here? Our Outer Express, modernization of outer railways, connecting the Pearl River Delta in its outer regions, or MTR project, directly connects the public transportation networks to the three cities of the Pearl River. Well, this one seems okay, but this one increases. Matsushita and Hong Kong really want this one. So I'll probably go with this one, Mass Transit Railway. It's a major public transport ne network initiative that connects major cities and satellite cities in the Pearl River Delta. It provides train and bus services around 24 major routes connecting urbanized areas such as Koshu, Hong Kong, Macau, and the numerous satellite cities around it. Cool. If you want to read about better research facilities as well as improved academic base, please go ahead. Yay. Ooh, more growth. Get back to the schools. Uh, cost more for research. 
Research development facilities monthly change goes down. I'm gonna get more growth too. Overall, not bad. 90%, not bad, not bad. Where are we at here? Cool. Actually, what do we have here? Good. Ooh. And make sure to really start to solidify that. Nice. That's very good. All blue is going to be very good for us later on. And where are we at? And decrease by 0.27 every month. Fan freaking tastic. And the country parks ordinance passes. What did you expect? Well, minus 0.53. That's not good enough. Uh, next one that's going to increase is what? Admin efficiency, maybe? Ah, uh, industrial expertise. Marita Akira had overcome a mix of approval and opposition from Sony to attack you. To win a majority, but no one in the legislature stopped him. <coughs> Various opponents, even speculators, did their best to block his ordinance, but he went on to say anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, the argument that preserving green areas and unused land is uneconomical and wasteful by is incredibly far removed. They will lead to a much more economical notion of providing all citizens with the added value that nature provides. It also eases the depression of those who disagree only for the sake of op opposition. Laughter bursts out across the room. Then come out and begin to argue. The executive secretary packs up jokes and trifles, but in reality, all he's done is to undermine the profitability of the land and de dedicate shareholders' money to the Chinese people. However, all he gained from this argument was a widespread opposition from Sony, Chung Kong, Matsushita, and Fujitsu. Well, come on, can you continue to point out Marita's radical and efficiency policy and try to persuade uninsighted people? I think if Sony, Chung Kong, and Matsushita agree with the crazy plan, Guangdong will go bankrupt within 10 years. But also, was a backlash against his aggressive attitude. Also, Shida Masaharu joined the three delegations and taking Komai lightly. You say, uh, inefficient radicalism, and you say that the standard of efficiency, and everyone knows you follow an inefficient method somewhere in the Northeast. In reality, Mr. Komai, you are the only one who cannot blame this for its, uh, for its efficiency. No wonder Komai is angry. The country park ordinance was passed in a jolly laugh. Silicon can exist, coexist with nature. Nice. Hopping us out here. Not bad, not bad, not bad. As we have fiscal independence next. Nineteen fifty-five. Early morning at the precinct in the little break room, he sat in the, with fellow officers around a new Matsushita television in the government, or said the government, uh, and allowed them to procure over the last years of work. Then I had sipping somewhat stale coffee. They watched a recording of the Sony Lee v. Fujitsu trial. The David versus Goliath, the electronics industry, with some would say, unfolding in full color. He finished his coffee and went to the locker room to pack up. His shift was over. The officer Hayashi no longer existed. Or did he? He walked outside. Overcast clouds came in from the sea and engulfed in the sky in blobs of slate gray. He saw those pennants, those banners, and those brocades of advertisements snap and float in the wind, like a splayed palm displaying its contents. Where did Lamb end and Hayashi begin? Right by the transition, near a newspaper kiosk, the radio sang a dual ballad, once in Cantonese, chased by Japanese. He didn't catch the lyrics in a hurry as he was to get home. Who was he? He waited for the train to come. Haka, he thought at first. Guess people. That made sense to him for a moment. After a pass, he shook his head no. When was the last time he even spoke to the dialect? You gotta remember, is he Chinese? That too made sense for a moment. Or Japanese? Neither. There cannot be two sons in one sky. Well, I've left him with a singular noun, Zhu Jim. Strangers in a familiar lamb. The train screeched to a halt before him, his door sliding open smoothly, let the flood of passengers in. He strode forward and held onto a handhold. Uh, lamb thought of his father, no letter since that fateful day. No more briefcases, no more news. Is he still fighting the good fight? He, no answers. He watches as the city shake, uh, shook and the skyline shifted. The tips of those skyscrapers contrast against the gray sky, never seemed less beautiful. That's where he belonged, where Hayashi was, where Lamb would be. Of two natures, a single being. A little bit of confusion. Yeah, I'll do that one in the Pearl Necklace Scheme. Guangdong's main economic activity takes place in three major cities in the Pearl River Delta, but the physical connections of the three cities are still inconvenient, especially places like Hong Kong, where there's still an island separating, uh, oh boy, um, the land from transportation. The Pearl River Necklace Scheme will open a land transport network that directly connects the three cities, especially in Hong Kong, to the end of the physical separation by building an undersea tunnel. Build an undersea tunnel to connect Hong Kong Island to the mainland and create a large Hong Kong economic zone. Well, that seems like a smart idea. And geotechnical engineering office. There have been numerous development projects since the rule, but Guangdong is still vulnerable to disasters due to excessive development in various natural environments. Geotechnical engineering office will be established to take primitive measures, or preemptive measures, to uh, prevent natural disasters and human casualties. Nice. A fiscal independence attained. It was a pleasant day in the government district of Koshu, and the four top men in the Marita government of Guangdong breathed a sigh of relief and cleaned cups of coffee and sat down to eat lunch. All the initiatives have passed, which has two major positive consequences. First, Guangdong is fiscally independent for the first time in its history. Second, the state had all its financial backing it needed to bring about any program or plan it wanted to execute. As a result of this, Morita Kale, Li Kaxing, and Stanley Ho were all understandably pleased as punch. Now, what might have surprised an onlooker was that Masashida Masaharu was smiling just as wild as his three more reformist colleagues, but a person who Masashida well knew you know, that he was happy for two reasons. One reason was that being of one of Marita, Marita's ministers came with perks such as selective enforcement. The other was that Marita was more than content to give his external secretary some leeway if it meant pulling Kamai in, in particular, Ibuko down one or ten or five pegs. 
On the other hand, I was so happy that the government would finally have the money needed to implement some of Lee's most ambitious programs. Before they dug into the bento boxes, Masashida straightened his face for a briefing, brief moment to remind them of one important thing, that through financial independence was well and good, the economy still needed to keep growing. After all, instead of growing pie helps everyone. At that, they nodded and dug in. Oof. That's a lot. Once fell swoop, it could get rid of all that. Oh, are we maxed out? Oh, we're maxed out. Look at that. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy 1970. New decade, new us. Hopefully, we'll do well. Quarterly growth of police influence in each affected region. Yeah, that's good. 100% stability. 2.31 every single day. Collapse of the SS. Oh, I'll just drop. I haven't seen that in a while. Look at that. From the ashes, huh? Ashes to ashes. Oh, are they all the same? Oh, red poppy movement. From the ashes. Interesting. So how much do we need? 55 billion? 55.88, no. Nice. Nice, there you go. Oh. Alright, it just it gets rid of all that. Very good. Oof, it's getting higher. Not ideal. Inflation is quite critical. What do we got here? Hey, 58 votes. Public transport ordinance. Oh, increase look at it deserves by 0.35 billion. Yeah. Everyone will like it. Increases state GDP, more growth. Because of the MTR, everyone goes, uh, Zujin and Chen's gonna like it. More oh, free infrastructure. Well, we already built all the infrastructure we needed. Whoopsie. Well, oh well. What are we building now? Radar? Not sure how much that's really gonna help us, but okay. Oh, not ideal. Go ahead. <clears throat> Four months left. Cool. Oh, only seven percent. Wow, three billion. That's not good enough. Seven percent. That's not good either. Ooh. Is this sustainable? Probably not. 14 votes, 14 days left, not bad, and the historical reconstruction. Uh, oh, dare to dream, we need to complete. Uh, throughout the turbulent six, he's Guangdong has changed so much. Before coming Chief Executive of Guangdong, Murito Keosep, my management philosophy is to provide happiness to all people who have interest in the Sony. Now, all 50 million people in Guangdong have been interested in him. Got speed, fearless and valiant inside, rough terrain or no respite. Side by side, we will overcome ills, and as a Guangdong story, we right. Increases, exceeds by one, more growth. Oh, increase our GDP by 2%. 2%? That's nice. And most people will like that. Not all, but most people will. Um, Lion Rock Spirit. Oh. An independent commission. The bar old and old saying, men will want to make a quick yen for far longer than another men will resist him. And so as continued preeminence in the legislative council is by no means a certainty. Disaster may strike the chief executive or other circumstances may align so he leaves the office earlier than is due. As crusade screeches to a halt, the man's persistence will nip at its edges. Renders opponent in, uh, through a thousand cuts until Marita's successor dismantles it entirely. Men are independent of the chief executive's decree, are not so vulnerable. In effect, a commission mandated to investigate government corruption will perpetrate uh, themselves in a place so rife that it's Guangdong. But maybe there, will, there they will spot the grime and cracks near the Marita and Rodelikin spot, part of misdoers from their money without the chief executive ever lifting a finger. When feared by many and answerable to none, an independent commission is the most resilient weapon that government will ever have against human nature. Which begs one question, do dogs ever bite the hand that feeds them? Setting boundaries. Well, we should probably do that one. Oh, we have the requirements for it. Oh, there's no ordinances right now. Well, God dang it. How many more days have we got left? Eight? Uh, I'm gonna wait for eight days. I don't know if I want to wait eight days for that. We do have to dare to dream first. That's 30 days. And we should be able to, eh, we'll get this done anyways. How many seats we got? Quite a few. That's nice, don't get me wrong. We definitely don't need to bribe our own seats, though. Nice. It passes. There's an unusual day in the Legislative Council. Uh, Murray Kao never seen Matsuharu Matsushita defend Sony's ordinance with such passion, and he seemed to be doing a pretty good job. Ladies and gentlemen, let's try to understand the benefits this proposal brings to us and our companies. Whatever differences we may have, better access to labor is a no-brainer when it comes to a staying in business. This proposal is even more of a no-brainer when you consider the fact that the state, not us, is footing the bill for its implementation. Those opposers are frankly out of their minds, besides. You can get around your, in your limousine without getting stuck in traffic. 
If a master of Ibuka, Komai failed to object, they only mildly resisted. Citing financial concerns, Hitachi could use the workers more cheaply and efficiently, and Fujitsu's technicians didn't want to waste their time on the streets for nothing. Ibuka and Komai found that their own delegates were actively supportive of the ordinance, and some even tried to persuade them on the grounds of practicality. Ibuka then reluctantly voted in favor of the ordinance. Morita celebrated with Ibuka's humiliation, and the new ordinance that would change the three great cities of the Pearl River Delta from the ground up. I'm very happy, but it's kind of expensive. Yeah, most things are. Not bad. Mm, yeah. This equipment is looking pretty good. Military professionalism isn't bad either. That helps the deficit a little bit. More growth is always good. Now, in the economic review, if you want to read about this, please go ahead. More Sony seats, which is going to penalize us. Japan's approval will go up a little bit more. Where are we at? For, uh, that's good. I mean, the 12% growth or 68.159 billion. Jesus Christ. Corruption eliminated. Yeah, there's nothing corrupt here. Oh, did we lose something here? Oh, yeah, we did. No, we didn't. See? Not at all. Three billion in deficit. Well, not ideal, but you know, it is what it is. And then a clean start of civil servants work for the people. But please protect them in the sun. We can only help that Stanley House Associates and protect them in the dark. While we must preserve some freedoms of action for ourselves, the power of games and boardroom politics surrounding the chief executive's office will never truly disappear. We have built a security apparatus in Guangdong that we can trust with the full which will fulfill its public duties long after we're gone. Nice. The world is half full. A lot of rare sunlight day filtered in through the blinds of Marita's corporate office in Hong Kong Central, suffusing the space of warmth. Beneath his office, a thousand people in suits and high neck uh, chong gowns, uh, both playing in intricate and rags and tattered pantaloons, or pantaloons, pantaloons, note about the majestic fountains in the square even as camp by guards warded them away from the brownstone facade of the government complex. Do you think they understand what we do up here, Marita Musi Lee, who is making, uh, marking up a memorandum on Marita's desk? Do you think they're listening to us? If you're talking about Yibuka and Kamai, well, they aren't going to listen to us to begin with, Lee replied, but we put them on notice that they're breaking the law now. Ignorance is an, ex an excuse. Hmm, Marita didn't turn away from the window, staring at the teeming crowd below. Okay, all these sad, seeing his work outside. The law is the law. Only this time, the law is working for everyone down there, and not just for us, the two of us up here. I can tell my children that they have a chance at a better future, and so does everyone else. Side by side, we all overcome all ills. Nice. Two and a half percent. Well, it's already maxed out. You must well burn two and a half then. Hmm. How many challenge representatives? I guess so. Why not? Would we rather have. Whoa. Ooh, that's not bad. Political power is okay, which we will need later. Ooh, growth would be good, though. Ugh. Right, we could really more growth, but we'll spend less political power here, so we can do this one later, maybe. Hmm. You know what? Let's do this one. There you go. That better already, huh? Back to driving. Oh, I've definitely read that one before. Unusual, ge genial. Oh crap. Uh, backseat driving. If you want to read this one, please go ahead. Yeah. Now we'll do that one right now. And usually genial. Now the tribes control these series of streets here. It's an advantageous position, I'm told, by base for smuggling illicit substances and the rest of the city has an exorbitant rate. Murder Kale traced his finger across the map from one side of the urban grid to another, literally circling a wide swath of, of high rise apartments. Across from him, Attache Wang watched him passively, light from the desk lamp shining off his glasses. The Ox would love to cut in that territory. I'm sure they would try it. I'm sure they gain the ability to. Of course, Attache commented, taking a moment to adjust in his seat. In the end, however, the priority would be to assert government control in the area, yes? Oh, yes, yes, it'd take quite the effort, though. If I were the police to try, and to try today, they'd be shot to pieces. They would need more funding. The two men spoke as one, then glanced at each other. The chief executive suppressed a laugh, a difficult feat, as for as unprofessional as it was. This may have been the first time that he and Wang had ever actually agreed upon the course of action, or on anything for the matter. Very well, then, Tashi Wang stood up. I should inform the Consul General for discussion. Shall we schedule a meeting for our next week? Murder Kao resisted the urge to make a witty comment about how this was the first time in his life that he actually wanted a uh, follow-up meeting with Wang. I'll get my secretary on at once. Good. We'll speak again soon. Well, we're already maxed out still, so we're going to come back this way. 3%? Screw it, we'll do that one then. Setting boundaries. There wouldn't be enough to declare a campaign against corruption. Now a few suspects and call it a day for Marita's talk about cleaning house to be meaningful. There would need to be something more permanent. Uh, but the devil will be in the details. Lee Kishin, Stanley Hill, and the Commissioner Amori, the only ones Lee, or Marita, trusted on this 
have been arguing in circles. Even in the shadows of Meridia's office began to lengthen and tilt, ringed in orchid, orchid light. Any kind of expansive or statutory body could be bobbed or twisted by anyone with deep pockets, that is. Anyone who is here. Stanley warned, cufflinks flashing as he gesticulated grandly. Any anti corruption team needs to be nimble, answer only bull. Answerable only to the chief executive in an advisory capacity. Perhaps the tycoons of the five companies, too, if they fear overreach, I'll get them on board. <clears throat> that would be solved nothing, Lee said, rolling his eyes without a formal mandate as inspector general and the resources to actually trace leads. And if you want the light code to sign off on either, they'll ask for a collective oversight. Um, I'll leave the politics up to you three. You don't uh, pay me to get involved here. Where I'm paid is to get results, Omori huffed, crossing his arms. And unless you have a completely independent commission, I guarantee you that the vested interest will make your efforts be in vain. Funny. It takes some effort to get you to come around ha having me in the room. Something about my connection. Stanley fired back. We all know how this commission will be different. Stanley's advisory council it is. And a small, uncontroversial advisory council will be proposed to Leco. We'll ask for Leco's permission to create the Inspector General position, promising them oversight in exchange for votes. The results are everything. From the Independent Commission. Vote on from the Independent Commission against the corruption, and they better get with the program. That's a drastic number of changing seats. We're going to keep some political power. Playbook. We can't keep doing this. Let's we'll take everything and leave us with nothing. Chief Executive Marita watches Director Marita... Director Marita Kale face the line of stone face executives at a conference table. And the cold winter light slicing through the window blinds and casting sharp shadows across the room. Director Marita's hair was still black. Even streaks of gray were noticeably visible like mine. The detail betrayed the setting of Marita's resurrected memory, the end of the Tokyo Telecommunications in February of 52. Some executives looked at their hands, preferring uh, uh, to wallow in silent shame. A few stared at the wall behind Marita, their minds already set. Only one Ibuka Master looked Marita in the eye. We've been all over this, Marita. Or, the Zabatsu banks will lend to us. We begged every yen we could from the family and friends, Ibuka said, a steely glare visible behind his glasses. It's not enough. Fujitsu is the only one who will give the project a chance. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, our project, Murta shot back, is not theirs. We can give the world a uh, radio that fits in a pocket, and you want nothing. And you want to hand it over to the geriatrics of Fujitsu? They're offering us money in town when nobody else will, Ibuka replied, jaws clenched. That's not good enough for you? No, Murta shook his head, it's not. Silence. The chief executive Murta felt the chill between the founders of Tokyo Telecommunications plunged past zeros as Ibuka's lips twitched. Flashing condensation, or condensating arrogance that would become more evident years later in Guangdong before he called the board a vote. Murta woke up before reliving his final disgrace, being fired and fleeing Japan. Oh, we actually need one more. Look at that. Huh. Let the chips fall they may with ICAC. Political backing, huh? Because we got to think about the uh, other stuff coming up. Corral Stragglers. Marie Dunley stared out the window of the office, gazing upon the tapestry of light and flashing colors of the light of the city below. The reflections of the glass portrayed two minds in contemplation, weighing the options as it continued to trudge through the political mire. You know how this ordinance regarding corruption is concerned many for a reason, right, Lee? All right, uh, Lee muttered as he placed a hand within the pocket of his blazer. Mm-hmm. Everyone has something to hide, something dirty they did at one point or another. Can't expect everyone to be clean, Marita briefly tilted his head upwards towards the pitch-dark sky. Getting backing for this one's going to be challenging. We don't even have stable support from our own base of people. We can't really expect attract outsiders when we can't secure our own quarter. Unless we want this ordinance to slam directly into a brick wall and shatter itself, we better consider some methods of incentivization. Corruption is already seen as something reprehensible. Perhaps a little guilt will do as well. An airplane cut through the dark clouds with its blinking lights towering over the skyline. If that doesn't work, there's always an appeal to profit. Product dividends sound good. So I turn to leave. Murray's eyes wide. Everybody has something to hide. We could weaponize them. If they're expose and perhaps prosecute them for the past misdeeds, it would go towards combating corruption, would it not? Ideas when they air, whether they would be executed, though, is another question. Ethics are built within us. How could you not condemn corruption? Everyone likes wealth. Promise product dividends. Discipline and Sony Chung Kong seats support the bill. Honestly, we'll just do that one, and then we'll just do like this one. It's a little bit of corruption, but. Hey, 50, 50 out of 50 is not bad. Are you kidding me? You're going with this one. Please go ahead. A little surprise as well. We still have 50. God dang it. Uh, in the comparison to the walk to the door with the Consul General Song seemed to enjoy conversing on, Meridio Keo uh, walked to the door with a touchy wing was, as with most things apparently into the man, seemed silent, uncomfortable, and tense. Wordlessly, he moved to open the door, pulling it to, to reveal the urban, busy urban street outside. The chief executive adjusted his suit, weighing the sweetheart. Marita Kao turned his, uh, around from his exit to see the attaché embrace his wife, who seemed to have a material from behind the both of them. Ah, he thought he hadn't seen her before on first glance. She seemed relatively unassuming. Composed of nothing else, a perfect fit for Wang, he realized, cracking a smirk. The two conversed in amiable tones, exchanging menial news and relative pleasantries between themselves. Chief Executive, now third wheeling to some degree, he considered that this was probably the least uptight he'd ever seen the attaché. In fact, he almost said he looked like he had some emotion in himself. 
Hmm, what is she doing here, actually? A workplace visit, conveniently timed her a message to him that the attaché was a little more human than he assumed. It was a little conspiratorial, sure, but this was Wang Jingzhu. Conspiracy didn't exactly seem beyond him. Was making a point really enough to merit a workplace visit? Well, Marita Kiel conceded. It is he knew that even a hard booty like Wang had a family. A normal, abnormal couple. There's more to Wang Jingzhu than meets the eye. We may be able to learn more. Eventually in time, yes. But yeah, 50 votes, not bad. Clean start. And then we'll do, uh, let's choose price. Master Shu's giving uh, Marita a sympathetic look, which made him uh, uh, uneasy. I've done everything I can, Master Shu said. He certainly looked like he'd been at hard work. With a shirt wrinkled and bag under his, bags under his eyes, it could, it could all be for show. They just won't budge, Master Shu continued. Marita said, you can't even guarantee all the votes of your own faction? Mar Master Shu shrugged, I can't control everything they do. I can only offer them incentives, and the only incentives they'll accept for his bill is cash. Marita put his glasses on his desk and rubbed his eyes, so you're saying to pass my anti-corruption measures, I need to directly bribe public officials. Master Shu shrugged, that's about the size of it. No, we're good. According to Maslow's theory, the desire for self realization is the highest level of desire. Now the center needs to fill the deficiencies, but the productive need to move on to a better level of its own. The promotion of culture depends on the demand for productive needs, and the recent reforms have made us aspire just beyond our survival. The construction of the Jubilee Sports Center and the Guangdong Academy of Arts will produce numerous athletes and artists, which will mean the natural beauty and spirit of Guangdong. Maybe we can see Guangdong athlete who's on the podium in the Olympics, maybe. In time. Ooh, more, more, nice. Obviously, any outreach to book himself is out of the question, Morita began. Across the desk, Stanley Honata, but he said, picking a few pieces of paper out from the pile of sifting through. Um, there are a few men in his employee who may feel otherwise. Ho laid the papers out on the desk. There were reports from various Fujitsu employees who, reports indicated, had expressed sympathies for greater state oversight. We could reach out to these few men, apply a bit of pressure, Ho shrugged, it could get you a few more votes. At the risk of Ibuka finding out we're doing it right under his nose, Ho shrugged, just nothing ventured. Be granted a small edge in the Lug Co., my more money be redirected to the competition of power. Diarchy gains majority. Hello? Uh, the session of the Lego began. Soft murmurs of panic spread throughout the many of the council's benches. So in Chung Kong, along the underdogs within the chamber, and some achieved majority support. With Murta Kiao's chief executive, the ascendancy of the state faction was impossible to deny, naturally. Chung Kong CEO Li Keqing and Morita saw as developments a victory and a vindication of the reformist approach to Guangdong's problems and opportunities. For the minority within the chamber, this was not a happy day. The Matsushita men were the least bothered. While they had their differences with Sony's approach, their opposition was not a yawning chasm. The same would not be said for Fujitsu's representatives within the Leko. All follows the Libuka Masaharu's, Libuka Masaharu's vision of a highly efficient, if inhumane, Guangdong. Sony's preeminence was a firm challenge to the vision of the future, and the angry grumbles spread among the counselors. Those loyal to Hitachi were the most upset. While CEO Komai Kenichiro was not present, as the underlings were. Progress was paramount for Fujitsu, but raw economic growth was Hitachi's priority. The Manchuria model had no room for compassion for workers in its quest for bigger bottom line, and so any CK's new power threatened Kamai's design on the river, uh, Pearl River Delta. Even now, as Murta and Lee celebrated just beginning to flex the muscles of the new legislative powers, the other corporations scrambled to react. An unchecked Sony was an existential threat, so the conspirators spared no expense. Marginal members of Sony's coalition came under immense pressure. Anonymous phone calls promising bribes, threatening blackmail, and willing compliance. And as always, there was a man waiting to name the price for the allegiance. Are you kidding me? Bro. 15 days. We can, can, we, can we pass this still? As long as we can still pass it, it doesn't matter. That's complete crap. That's what I hate about this. Like, it's just artificial, like... Roblox for us right, like that right now. Man. That's the unfun part about this. So, to Hitachi, you can't be seriously insinuating that this is a good deal, Lee tied in his face in confusion and displeasure. Why not place originally upon Murray's desk? You're actually suggesting we bargain with Hitachi? Considering it, uh, Murray kept his gaze averted from Lee's indignant expression, focusing on the calculations laid before him. If it means getting the ordinance passed, which directly benefits our cause and progresses our objectives, why not secure more support? Lily's eyes switch as he opens his mouth because their interests are diametrically opposed to ours. By putting for their backing, we're putting ourselves in a disadvantageous position. Not to mention the amount of demands they'll certainly make of us. Wouldn't that hamper our efforts? Lily's argument was convincing. Natasha's practices were unscrupulous and entirely opportunistic. So again, the support would be an uphill battle fraught with losses. Uh, the question of whether he would be willing to sacrifice certain interests to secure the ordinance's passing. Additionally, it seemed that cooperation with Hitachi would mean colluding with, the, colluding with the agents of Manchukuo, which would absolutely be counterintuitive to an extent. Uh, even back in his chair, while Leah made good points, he was not yet completely confident in the success of the ordinance. Perhaps working together once with the rival would bring the benefits in the long term, and it certainly ensures immediate interest in the ordinance he carried through. Why would we do that? Oh, look at that. Nice. Please. Thoughts on the nukes. Are, oh, 
bro. Just artificial bit stuff like this. Dumb. Take him out. Where are we here? 22? It's not terrible. Seven per almost 8%, not quite, and that's not great. So high inflation, which is not good. But poverty's still getting better, right? Hello? Oh, 1956. Page 2 of the Zujin Census Forum. You're tasked with answering three essay questions relating to your current status in Canton. The government places a strong preference for answers written and correct in functional Japanese. Question 1. Describe a background. Include familiar and ethnic details where possible. That's not a question. A1. My name is Hayashi Kozen. I came from Choshu, a few miles east towards the Three Mountains. I'm a Hakka speaker. My family have been silk farmers for a century or two. The recent turbulence has necessitated migration to Shinsen, where my extended family now lives. Question 2. Or really the first question. You consider yourself to have contributed meritoriously to the state? If so, describe the ways you have. Answer to you. I served in the Koshu PD for four or so years, starting in 51. Prior to that, I served in the Kowloon Precinct for a year before my transfer. In 1952, I received multiple commendations for my role in the third triad gun smuggling case, in which I was also wounded, including one from the inspector. I believe that having put my life on the line for the state, I'm qualified to answer the affirmative. In question three, which is really two, what are your opinions of the Code Prosperity Sphere headed by the Empire of Japan? In your opinion, has it contributed positively towards the development of Canton? Which is as the third question. Answer three. The Code Prosperity Sphere has heralded a new era in Asian politics. In Canton, Japanese capital investment has substantially increased the standards of living among the populace. I believe personally that without Japanese intervention to establish a state here, the three pearls would not have transformed the way it did for the past six years. As such, I see the sphere as a positive. Truth bleeds into fiction, real bleeds into unreal. Hey, China modernizes. Let's see if we can follow them. Passage to the ordinance. The anti corruption crusade of Guangdong State Faction had a great victory today as Chief Executive Morita proposed ICAC bill was to pass despite a vigor vigorous campaign on the part of Ibuka Master of Fujitsu and ruthless coordinated opposition from the Tachi delegation. As the debate neared its end, Ibuka went on a Jeremiah. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's presumption piled upon presumption for the Chief Executive to think that he somehow has the right to audit, audit or dictate what the companies are doing. Such an idea is disruptive, foolhardy, and disastrous. Corporations of Guangdong never prosper precisely because they are free from the overbearing government interference of uh, the sort one finds in Japan or America or Germany. To counteract this argument, Marina Lee argued to, and thought that the proposal was only an honest proposal to counteract Guangdong's academic corruption. Amidst the pandemonium set off by this counter argument, the bill was put to vote and passed. Ibuka, now incandescent with rage, started ranting again, darn you to heck, Marita, you probably bribed everyone to vote for this stupid law. You guy, you've unleashed forces you don't understand. Nobody in this darn city is entirely innocent. We're going to scoff at Ibuka, but Lee looked somewhat concerned. He feared that Ibuka had a point and the ICAC might bl uh, blow up in everyone's faces. A great victory, regardless. Order in progress. This is a sunny day in Koshu. There's no smog in the air. On his way to work, Lee Chen looked around and saw nothing that made him regret feeling good about the day. He did, however, uh, see a policeman acting in a far better manner than what he was used to. The officer was directing traffic with practice gestures and an absence of violence. When not pointing his arms or blowing his whistle, he was pointing out directions of various directionally challenged passerbys. This wasn't the only thing Chen had seen or heard about, after all. Individual good cops have been a thing for years. And Chen's family had been welcomed to Guangdong by that type of officer, no. These days, there was also far fewer arbitrary arrests and even fewer instances of Camp Atai overreach, too. Even better was that the gangs that used to prey on neighborhoods like Chun's had quieted down, but Chun had no idea whether that was because of the increased police presence or for other reasons. All told, the police seemed to be helping people for once in their lives like they claimed they were always supposed to. Did Chun trust the police? Of course not. Uh, uh, they were so cops. P people didn't call a lot of guys for nothing. He also couldn't trust the corporations that rule Guangdong not to abuse the police, but it can safely say that he distrusted the police less. Unlike before, the police were doing their job and not rolling over the front of the camp by time. It was bare minimum, but even that was better than nothing. Our approach to policing was involved in the two tier policing, uh, local policing. Labor rights course. Ooh, look at this. We'll replace Corby C. Lavery with penal labor. Let's see, what's it going to do? Her construction speed and factory output and free repair and consumer goods production factor and poverty gets better. Need consumer goods goes up though. Yes, yeah, her ordinance was excellent. The working environment has become safer and the living environment has been improved, but there's a fatal problem with this. If a company decides to violate an ordinance, it would take too long for individual workers to correct it and even succeed it. Special judicial committees will be set up in certain areas to correct these judicial errors and ensure the rights and interests they deserve. Nice. However, uh, stats are changing. Yasukawa Yoshiko and Hayashi Kozen met up in a restaurant in the middle class district of Koshu. The matter being discussed was, of course, the recently passed ICAC bill, which attracted the attention of everyone in Guangdong from the furthest reaches of Guangxi to the shores of Kalu. After getting some lunch and the two teams took up some tea to wash it down, they started talking. So, what do you think about it, Officer Hayashi? The new ICAC ordinance, or whatever they're calling it? I think it's a cause for cautious optimism. It seems like the executives are actually putting their money where their mouths are on the fighting corruption. 
Hayashi's brow furrowed in concern as words dampened Yoshiko's enthusiasm. I'm afraid I can't share optimism, Miss Yasukawa. I read that this icy AC of theirs is an overcorrection, too strong, too aggressive. I actually fear it might cause more grief than it is worth. Yoshiko is confused. Why is that? Isn't fighting corruption in an unbiased manner a good thing? Ooh, it's close. Um, I actually know. Yes, you're 100% right on that. But the problem is that given the power of enforcement uh, to another organization with little to no oversight, it's going to cause internal strife. It's already over at the police. I have it on good authority that many of the Commissioner Mori's lieutenants are complaining quite vigorously about the matter. Yoshiko nodded. Or nodded appreciatively. Is that so? Yeah, so we'll spread, spread further. And we'll get some, go from widespread cronyism to political interference. We get more political power. Actually, we lose a little more political power. Or maybe widespread cronyism to professional army. Huh. Oh, we'll see. Compensation for law enforcement injury. Ooh, we lose political power here. But policy cost per capita goes down. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Doesn't make much difference to a person with a club and call it a stick of populace. After the reform of Guangdong police, police truly served justice, but past coercive of an unkind praxis still remain. As the people are far from being compensated for injuries or damages caused by police wrongdoing, and as a signal of the last stage of a real police reform, wash away past practices and introduce a law enforcement injury compensation system. Can the police finally become a stick of non populace or a stick of populace that's not only fair but uh, not repressive? No longer villain. Liu Mishu's family morning was brightened by the sight of a bowl full of rice and some vegetables and meat as they could barely put food on the table even after working day in and day out. Liu Mishu's parents smiled softly as they watched Mishu suffer a mouthful of food. They felt a small sense of joy that at least they weren't letting their daughter starve, even if they couldn't feed their good food. When Guangdong was harsher than it is now, they had to accept lower pay and longer hours. Liu Mishu's parents needed a wage they were scraped by uh, to simply survive. And their children worked in home-based industries where they earned a little extra money. But unlike her family's desperate struggle, Mishu's main interest was in running, accelerating, feeling the wind, and testing her limits. Her parents scolded and firmly rep reprimanded her whenever she abandoned her chores and took to the streets, but they understood whenever she tearfully apologized. But with each passing day, Mishu grew further and further away from her dream, thinking of herself as a villain who was while wasting her parents' money. Then one day, while returning from an errand, Mishu picked up a flyer on the street and it was about an experimental small-scale sports sponsorship run uh, program run by Sony and the Guangdong government. Mishu wondered why companies didn't seem to care much about anything, but money would do this, but thinking it was her last chance to be herself, she believed in her talent and hard work, entering the selection competition and won easily. On entering the Jubilee Sports Center, Mishu saw so many athletes and so many endorsements and sponsorships that she realized uh, uh, that she was a new kind of face for the megacorps, but from that moment on, she was happy to run until she collapsed from exhaustion. No matter what the future held, all Mishui, Mishui had to do was empty the rice bowl, or empty the bowl in front of her, say goodbye to her parents, and run to catch the bus in time. That was a girl chasing her dreams. Yeah, we could probably cut down more corruption. New capital bill these. We've got a month left. 7.5%. That's not bad. I still like less corruption. Uh, minus 0.35 is very, very good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, we're just greatly outpacing everyone else. 8% growth. Hello. That's the ACA work. As the ICAC worked in the functional, relatively unpretentious offices in Koshu, um, the new commissioner, Kamino Satoshi, contemplated how he had gotten to where he was. Look at that. Uh, back when he worked in the great and terrible metropolis that was Tokyo, he'd be known for his incorruptibility, so much so, in fact, that when his classmate of the police academy, police commissioner Mori Guangdong, asked about possible candidates for an anti corruption commission, his name came up in 50 people's recommendations. His men, too, were handpicked by the commissioner from Japanese, Zuzhen, and even native Chinese officers known for their resistance cor to corruption. Now, the quality was an uh, in action as it began the first major investigations. The commissioner served in command. Uh, serving a civic Chinese officer known as Tui Manhe got his attention. Commissioner, we've got a similar situation for you to look at. Camino noted and took the paper. Uh, Tsui handed to him. Described a major drug smuggling ring organized to Camino's visible disgust by corrupt members of the police. Looking at Tsui, he nodded. Go ahead. Over the next few days, the ICAC will work quickly and efficiently, completely insulated from the legco's prying eyes and freed from even the slightest external influence. Muritake had no idea of this until Omori Khan put an ICAC report on his desk. Let's get to it. Oh, that's not as much as I would have liked. Huh. Oh, this is next. Perhaps the mass territorial restoration, huh? Hey, everyone about power. Vestments of power efficiency technology. Please go ahead. As well as better industrial equipment. Look at that. Fan full up and fantastic. And less of our ha people live in poverty now. Good. Two tier policing, huh? Cap goes down. Uh, Chinese vision and government support cap goes minus 5%. Can't protest state control cap. Excellent. 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 Not bad. Not great. Not great either for one, really. Social. Population grew by 1.6 million. The ranks of the poor shrink by 2.5 million. Oh, large trade partners in Italy. 
women joined the workforce, over half a million people learned to read, people went to college, 461,000 people died from preventable diseases, state pension, military personnel decreased by eh, 600, nuclear stockpile. Nah, it's not that overall. ICAC report. The perfect commissioner Camino Satoshi's ICAC had come out of the blue one fine day, which is like the next day. Neither Amori Khan nor any of his subordinates are expecting something as told as the document that they read. Needless to say, Amori said this is a matter for the chief executive. The said chief executive was having a pleasant conversation with Lee Kishin and Matsushita Masaharu when all of a sudden a series of staccato knocks were heard at the door. Who is it? That's Amori Khan, the chief executive with Stanley Ho. Something came from the ICAC. It's huge. Rita jumped up and rushed to the door, opening to find his finance minister and the bemused police commissioner. Amori was holding a thick dossier in both hands. Going to the table and reading over the dossier, they were surprised by the ruthlessness and the wide scope of the police organized drug ring and Camino's plans to do away with it. The ICAC did not plan to stop with arresting rank and file officers, nor merely arresting Chinese and Zhujim, though. They planned to arrest a senior Japanese investigator at the station, a man called Saogawa. They planned to move in the next few days. The men at the table thought about doing something, but they remembered that the ICAC bill had enshrined its independence into the law. There was nothing they could do. With that in mind, the four ministers and one officer shrugged, put the report aside, and went back to talking. The conversation returned to its previous pleasantness and addressed the people. Oh, we need to dare to dream first. Okay, well, I guess we're dreaming now. Today, the people of Guangdong wake up to something new, a sense of safety, of belonging. For the first time in years, Guangdong's people marched to work not as indentured servants of the five companies, but as members of something greater, a fledging society and culture taking root in the Pearl River Delta. More importantly, they knew who to thank and who to pay. And the gratitude. They live in Chong Kong's properties, buy food from Chong Kong supermarkets that use technologies developed by Sony Electrics, Electronics, while borrowing money from Sony's bankers to pay for the utilities provided by Sony Power and Plants. Leave from Morita in these hands and thank us for it. All is well. Um, all is as we once dreamed it, and we will not see this dream taken away from us, or taken away from the people, and from us. A new day in Guangdong Dons. Cool. And more growth. Followed up with the address of the people. Guangdong seems to have gone a little far away from the simple corporate experiments. Uh, what we left in our dreams is now reality. As we make a choice and change, the word Guangdong is becoming more and more of us. We're happy and anxious, and it was frantic as the world we have never seen opens up to us. Oh, we're freezing that. Nice. A new stage that we only see in the books open to us. We're waiting for new tomorrow in a city that has a lot of brilliant stories on the Pearl River Delta, and tomorrow awaits us. Red Archive. Of one mind in pursuit of our dream, all discourse set aside with one heart of the same bright quest. Hand in hand to the ends of the earth. Harsh being a code with incarceration. Loose political power. More stability and war support. Army cost modifiers, which is better. But admin uh, program cost factor goes up. Pieces. Ooh. Power will be to rapidly improve. Ooh, we get a lot of improvements here, too. A lot, a lot of things rapidly improve. Nice. That I see IC on his march. Lam Yao Sun looked with some red his colleague, one Chan Ka Kui by the name, who was visibly shaken after having just left the office that the ICAC had set up in his precinct. What do they do to you, Ah Kui? Chan sat and shook his head. Ah, oh, darn it, they pulled me inside for questioning for the last time today. Lam not a slightly understanding, see? What was it like? Chan sighed again. They kept bringing up random old case files and pointing things out in them out to me. They wanted to, me to talk about my other colleagues, and they kept on badgering me. I was annoying at best and exhausting at worst, almost torturous at times. Lam was curious now, so then why did you talk? At that, his friend threw up his hands and feet. Talk, of course I talk. I'd rather not get arrested by Camino and his lop. Well, I'm not understanding until he realized he had another question. Wait a moment, uh, Kui, if they badgered you into talking about your colleagues, why did you tell me about this? Chan Sen shook his head, spread his hands, and made a little sad smile. You're only one I'm fairly sure is clean out of a whole lot. You understand the situation a bit more, well, I'm not. As it turns out, uh, Kui, you're right. They didn't bother me at all. How many days is this one? Oh, 23 days. That's quite a few. We'll probably start with the next product cycle, too. Yeah, 15 days. This complaints. Masashita Masaharu's mood did not match the storminess of the weather in Guangdong that day, however. He was so, so quite concerned about the things were going with the new ICA, ICAC and his Commissioner Camino. These concerns were reinforced by the reports that had been brought to his attention by his interior secretary, which was now reading out to the chief executive and Li Kishim, joined as they were often by Commissioner Amori. Um, the police and the rank and file commissioner are not your lieutenants, they are all fine and lo are lodging serious complaints that the ICAC created by the government and enforced by Commissioner Kamino Satoshi is making the job impossible to do. Marita Nada, how precisely is it creating difficulties, Mr. Matsushita? Matsushita turned over a page and read out the pertinent section. Since the IC ICAC began its massive investigations, large swaths of the police have uh, descended into a morass of infighting. There's so much mutual suspicion and rivalry boiling over that is distracting every officer from his actual job. I uh, thusly looked uh, concerned. Amori's face was inscrutable. Marita's brow furrowed him thought. The way Matsushita saw it, Marita had two options. First, he could call in Commissioner Kamino to tell him to get on with it, which would allow him in the cabin to meet this man and see what he was up to. Second, he could just let the ICAC do its job. While well, this was no doubt worse than the political, uh, the police infighting, it would set a commendable example in the fight against corruption, which, make no mistake, Matsushita hated too. In the end, Morita decided to call Kamino. That's an interrupt. 
and let the ICAC go on with its work. Oh, look at that. Oh, they're really small now. Good job, Germany. You got, you benefited out of this, Borman, Mr. Balding Borman. Good job. Building more stuff up still. China's looking really awkward. With Yunnan and it's like that, that's disgusting. The matter of Sagawa Minoru. Murdukeo furrows brow for the matter in front of him requires the deepest consideration. Inspector Sagawa Minoru. The cloth good for nothing that had coordinated the entirety of the Luke Louis Lock Ring for his own personal benefit, resulting in the creation of an empire of crooked officers, had taken into custody and was now being subject to what they called prolonged questioning. When Commissioner Moro asked what that meant, he said that they were likely leading on him to confess to his offenses by hanging the evidence they had already collected over his head. Once they had his confession, a proper prosecution would begin from there. This was good on paper, but the ICAC had uh, not announced why Sagawa needed to be questioned. Also, she had reported that this stance was causing serious problems. Officers of the Guangdong Police, some on Sagawa's, Sagawa's take, but many more merely rank and file men, frustrated with what they perceived as the ICAC's overreach, had begun to mill about ICAC headquarters demanding an explanation. Now the matter was in more detail chaos hands. Two options came to mind. Explain Sagawa's charges, which would pacify the police but at risk a formal complaint from Tokyo, or simply hold him until he confessed, which would keep Tokyo quiet but anger the police more. Steepling his fingers, Murdy thought about some more and reached a decision, turning to Masashi, said, Give me the guy. Tell him he's free to stay and quiet. Give me the, the press secretary. We have some explaining to do. Getting Japan involved can easily become messy, but we'll call the police. They have a job to do. It's not our job to interfere. It may suck for us, but doesn't matter. They have their job, we have ours. Police get angry. The investigation continued without information being shared by the ICAC. The police now completely shut out of the loop were even more irritated than they were before him. At one point, officers of the Guangdong police, someone Sagawa Sagawa's take, but any more merely rank and file men, frustrated with what they perceived as ICAC's overreach, and begin to mill about the ICAC headquarters, demanding explanation. But they were consumed in enough anger and disquiet where they began to actively slack off on their duties, causing the street presence to suffer noticeably relative to the past. Masashida successfully convinced Colonel Miyazaki of the Kenpai Tai to help pick up the slack, however. Now Stanley Hill reported that all forms of organized crime, the Yakuza, Triad, you name it, had begun to assert themselves more on the streets too. Now the matter was once more in Morito Kao's hands, and he had narrowed it down to two options. He could push Commissioner Kamina to cut a deal with the police, wherein the police would switch to a voluntary reporting system, and exchange and have all lower-ranked officers off, off involved in the Sagawa case be amnestied out of ICAC custody, or he could just say the course and let the ICA do its job at the very end, or in the end he decided to reach a deal. Reach sure Kamina of his continued backing. Yeah. Hey, District Police. Good. Hey, I'll begin with the price cycle. Look at that. Nice. Good stuff. Uh, TC1010 tape recorder. Nice. Average profitability. Tar target markets. Giant opinion will go up. Oh, Italian market. Still two. Yeah. We'll sell to Italy. So we can still earn this goodwill here. 10%, 2% each. It's still going up no matter what, so. There you go. Justice uninterrupted. The crowd of un uniformed officers assembled as a midday approach, waiting, warding away any passerbys with flinty glares and crude jeers. They occupied the street outside ICAC's headquarters, building wall to wall, blocking traffic through purpose ride buses, while shouting at the civilians inside to take an early lunch break if they had aired. Inside, the ICAC investigators set, let their civilian counterparts out through the back, while the senior staff evacuated critical files and assailed safes. Safe. The police would not be content to stay outside forever. Their months of accumulated frustrations against the ICAC would not be so easily quelled. Cool. And the ICAC knew that better than anyone else. The officer on the duty made one phone call, then two, before joining his juniors. The police surgeon of the building just past 1 p.m., judging that anyone incident had abandoned the scene already. They pushed past impromptu barricades, treating the officers of the fellow servants as civil servants, as they would any of the crime scene, without restraint. Even though nothing important was found, violence was only averted by the timely arrival of a Kenpai Tai detachment, a wall of khaki separated two arms of the government at war with each other. In the end, it didn't matter. Inspector Sagawa's confession was taken down in a separate facility and forwarded to a hand-picked judge in Koshi in the Japanese Consulate General. The former would judge Sagawa's crimes. According to the new anti-corruption laws, and the latter would take custody of Sag Sagawa, a convicted criminal. Uh, in the weeks to come, those with full guilty consciences would leave the police, preferring to cut their losses than deal with the ICAC any further, leaving the space for a new generation to take their place. Until then, their absence will be filled by the camp by time. Decrease police control in every state. God dang it. Well, at least the culture of corruption becomes age's finest. That's not terrible, but god dang it. Look at that. With honor, duty, and loyalty. Age's finest. Culture of corruption. Not bad. Political power game goes up. Nice. Cannot use corruption to get Caesar votes. Well, say la vie. Sucks. What really sucks is that we might have lost some uh, 
Please control. Come on, please. Do better. Ah, dang it. We worked so hard to get that one. On this one next. Van Kosh Earthquake. Ooh. Fate, luck, and hard work. Chief Executive Marine tapped the microphone twice, the rapping of his fingers barely audible in the darkened auditorium. Outside the spotlight's glare, you could see the Sony product engineers mingling with Chung Kong sales executives, standing at tables laden with Cantonese delicacies, while secretaries guided honored del clients to pay tribute to the corporate patrons. As Murray Clay called the assembly to order, he remembered the similar party who celebrated the appointment, his appointment as chief executive. He felt exposed in a ca cavernous hall, as cohort of Sony Chung Kong lieutenants unable to fill the space despite their exuberant revelry. Now the auditorium felt claustrophobic, the walls barely containing a suited army with them, despite uh, the decorous bows and muted conversation. Beyond those same lieutenants, the inner circle of Zhu Jian executives and personal acquaintances of surrounding Morita Kale and Li Keqing flanked him on both sides, raising their glasses in unison as his address concluded. Li Keqing and Stanley Ho both stepped forward to clink the champagne glasses against Morita's own, first to be poured in the honor amongst their alliance Cabal, the new reigning cast of Guangdong. Hours later, Li and Morita uncorked their own bottle, the corks pop echoing in the deserted room. The two warily lowered themselves onto empty stools, catching the light of the port shore and cowling twinkling in the dark. From the alleys of Hong Kong to becoming tycoons to chief executive, this is our home, Marita ventured, losing his tie. Was it luck or was it fate? I believe in fortune, but I don't believe in fate, uh, Lee admonished, wiping his glasses. We know nothing else to lose a kale, cast away from Japan, and a factory owner. We know we had a chance and we seized it. We had to work for the rest and I'd sooner die than give up any of this. Nice. What tomorrow brings, Lee family mornings at Brian. The rice was new. The vegetables fresh and some form of meat every day. Whatever was left over was handed to hay and wine and stamped tin lunchboxes. Even if they couldn't stomach the canton, canteen fees of the government school, uh, they would see they would eat enough to not fall behind. Chun knew the day would be harder. Despite better paying shorter hours, the work was so backbreaking and the worst supervisors found excuses to cut corners uh, out of uh, the better ones. He still was under the random police patrols sweeping Chinese neighborhoods, but he could suffer most indignities if he knew that wine and hay would have a future. The government. I'll expand schools and ensure widespread secondary educational attainment. Lamb shook his head at the rate of ruckus, lofty dreams, and optimistic deadlines. All unattainable, even as the tycoons grew richer and less accountable with each year, but he couldn't bring himself to say it out loud. It surprised him, the cynic, abandoning cynicism. He wondered how much he dared hope, even as the growing purpose and stride said uh, what he did not consciously acknowledge. Yoshiko felt her consciousness drifting from the assembled uh, Japanese madams and uh, their husbands, and milling by them the rare private functions she was still invited to. They're preening over Tokyo's trends, a discussion of profits, and the tirades against China's indolence and Zhu Jin inferiority, all that had ceased to interest her, both tritely uh, inconsequential and deeply mistaken in the face of what she had seen. She rose to leave. She knew a few would mock her for her going native, and she don't care. Slowly, a nation changing to meet its future. Hey, we've got a lot of stuff to do. We've accomplished a crap ton of stuff, haven't we? Historical Reconstruction. Throughout the turbulent 60s, Guangdong has changed so much, but before becoming chief executive of Guangdong, Marita Keo said, My management philosophy is to provide happiness to all people who have interest in Sony. Nice. More of the same. Hey, half uh, sleepwalk the meandering route of school, traversing coaches many intersections in the shade of neon signs hanging you know, hanging unlighted by the street. His mind wandered elsewhere to sketches of a bridge of electrical circuit, of airflow diagrams, sketched hurriedly in a notebook margins. They were incomplete imitations of drawings in obsolete journals at a secondary school's library. Hey, you're spacing out. Why well, pinched her older brother's arm, trying to elicit a response on their increasingly silent morning journeys? Mom and Dad are worried. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Hey, I uh, said half sincerely, adjusting his satchel, just not looking forward to class, that's all. Uh, Hay's, Hay's, oh, Hay's mind wandered again as his sister, now in middle school, old enough to understand how much school meant to the Lee family, fixed Hay with a questioning stare. Again, not bring himself to say the truth, he was bored to tears. He wasn't challenged in the slides by the curriculum and a drip fade of arithmetic, letters, and science. A subject Hay could master in days, where it took his classmates a month. But even as he roared for more, students insisted that everyone remained together, traveling down a set path without exception. What about the talk about a scholarship? We, why didn't relent? Oh, it's the optimist. Didn't Chung Kong and Sony people come by? Yeah, and I ended up working for them for the rest of my life, Hay sighed. I'll take the scholarship, but that means all that they owe me. Working for some Sony or Chung Kong Honcho's reliable cousin or talented son, claiming my work is their own. I don't want to be cog in the machine. Guess that's looking not bad. Red Archive. From his corporate, comfortable apartment, Lee Chun looked out of the eerily beautiful night view of Koshu, something he could watch for the ninth time and never get tired of. He looked out of the skyline and saw what he had accomplished. A lot of money, a decent place to live, and even hobbies that I'd have never thought of ten years ago were now things that came naturally to him. He put out a red photo album and looked at uh, the memories he had experienced in those recent years, preserved in the form of photographs. As he slowly flipped through the photo albums, starting with the first page, it was clear that although Chun had dressed himself up like a laborer, his, as his co-workers would say, his lifestyle was clearly changing for the better. As Chun continued to flip through the pages, he looked back at the first page when he saw he was able to afford a camera. Look at that. 
He looked at again at his memories in the form of photographs. He realized that he was turning the last page of his photo album. He was satisfied with how happy and what, what, what he had accomplished, but he knew that he would need a new photo album. It was probably the happiest moment of his life. Nice. Looking all right so far. Historical reconstruction. Fantastic. Maybe another event to read? Oh, Godspeed. Krzysztof Janowski looked around as if, as if he was unfamiliar with the place, and combined with the exotic appearance, felt a lot like his, a lot of eyes were on him. Then an assistant came over and directed to a, him to a group of Sony product engineers standing around a table full of Cantonese food, and Jankowski stood off to the side of the table, greeting his colleagues and sighing with nervousness. Luckily, the eyes on him. Oh, disappeared as chief executive Marita used the microphone to begin his toast. Jankowski felt like he was floating on air as he listened to Marita's toast, which was delivered in Cantonese. When his colleagues tapped him on the shoulder to let him know the speech was over, he clapped and raised his glass like everyone else. He clinked champagne glasses with his colleagues just as uh, Li Jing and Sen Ho stepped forward and clinked Marita's. Hours later, as Jankowski staggered out of the building, champagne in hand and his full stomach, he shivered as he took in the brilliant night view and the crisp, cool breeze. Even though he had no friends to share this exhilarating experience with, he felt that this was home, if only for a moment, as he chatted and laughed. How long had it been since he had been home again, a man with nothing to lose? The harsh realities of the times had banished him to faraway places, but there were opportunities in places he hadn't even considered. And he took them, thanks to exiles like himself. And he walked back to his, as he walked back to his apartment, he looked uh, to the night sky and wished Marita and his fellow Sony men pioneers luck. At least I can see the future. It was a great, fantastic thing. So, um, 10%. We're going to end it there, probably. And then continue on the next episode and see you where things may lie. Maybe things will be great. Maybe things won't be great. Maybe, you know, we can avoid taxes. But we probably won't. So if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when it will probably, Paradise, will probably start collapsing all around us. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.